Good morning. <coughs> Test. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Well, thank you so much for joining us in worship today. Um, ordinarily, we're thankful for the sun, but I'm glad the sun's holding off for a little bit. It makes it a little bit easier um, for us. But again, uh, so glad that we can all gather together in worship um, under the tree, uh, in the yard, in the, in the back 40 over there, uh, it's, it all works out. So it is the 10th Sunday in the season of Pentecost, but it's also New Vicar Sunday. It is the installation of Vicar Simeon Crest, so we look forward to that. And we'll have some time after the service to uh, welcome him and introduce ourselves to him. Uh, his family's here, and uh, that you get to meet them too. And... Uh, yeah, we got a nice little welcome all set up. So let's let's open up our worship folders. Um, today we take a look at what a treasure the kingdom of God is. It's something that we uh, need to ask for in terms of it being the most important thing in our lives and something that once we receive by God, a gift of God's grace that we want to hang on to, that we want to value and treasure as well. But there will also be some ministry-type hymns and readings today that uh, also echo the, the theme of installing a new vicar, kind of beginning a, a whole new year. So let's begin um, by on page 3 by singing, Send, O Lord, Your Holy Spirit. We continue on page four, and we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin, for faithless worrying and selfish pride. For sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And we pray. O oh Lord, your ears are always open to the prayers of your humble servants who come to Jesus' name. 
Teach us always to ask according to your will that we may never fail to obtain the blessings you have promised. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and rules with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first scripture lesson today is going to be the basis of the sermon. In a little bit, it it is from 1 Kings chapter 3, reading verses 5 through 12. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream, and God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon answered, You have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him, and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. Now, Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. But I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of ours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, Since you have asked for this, and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment in administering justice, I will do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and discerning heart, so that there will never be anyone like you, nor will there ever be. This is the word of the Lord. Let's stand for the reading of the gospel. We hear Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 13, parables that teach us how to value the kingdom of God, the gospel. (coughs) Jesus says, The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven, is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. This is the gospel of the Lord. And let's now confess our Christian faith according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the sermon hymn, Jesus, Priceless Treasure.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God for our sermon this morning is from that first lesson today from 1 Kings. Your friends in Christ, my family and I spent last week at Yosemite National Park. I can't believe it took us that long to get there. It was stunning. Absolutely gorgeous and amazing. Our first day, we drove on that drive to Glacier Peak, which overlooks Half Dome and El Capitan and Vernal and Nevada Falls and the whole Yosemite Valley. It was just spectacular. Now, the signs I read by some of those viewpoints said, of course, all of this happened through billions of years of erosion. But I know it was all God. I know God uses natural means, to be sure, but, but either that was something even more spectacular before the fall into sin, and, and, and a fraction of it only exists today, which means what we call Yosemite today must have been even more gorgeous. And, or, after the fall into sin, after the flood, God still allowed us and formed for us something spectacular to see so that we could look at it, so that we could be amazed, and so that we could praise him for his grace, power, his wisdom. And, and that's true of, of any natural wonder. It's, it's true of a comet streaking through the sky. It's true of the sequoias, which we made a little side trip on the way back down, but it was a lot longer of a trip than I thought it was going to be. We saw the, the, big, the big General Sherman tree, and, and here's what I read about how those sequoias came to be. A single sequoia is home to thousands of egg-shaped cones. Sequoia Grove residents, such as the Douglas squirrels, who cut down the cones and eat the scales, and the long-horned wood-boring beetles that dig into the core of the cone curtail the water supply which open the cones and release the seeds. Frequent fires also open the canopy to sunlight, which reduces competition from natural resources from nearby trees, and rising heat from the fires also dries out the cones, allowing the seeds to scatter. Guess who came up with that system? God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And so today, I'm wondering, what if we could just grasp for ourselves a thumbnail of that wisdom and power and beauty of God? What if Vicar Crass, as he embarks on his year here, was able to capture just a little bit of that wisdom from God because, you know, a first vicar can make no mistakes. A second vicar? What if our teachers who are preparing to teach outdoors or online or in person or something somewhere, what if, what if they could grasp just a little bit of wisdom from God as they prepare for their classes We've got a couple of homeschool parents. Uh, we've got parents that might have to teach their kids through online again. What if they could, could just get a little bit of wisdom and, and power and grace from God? What about you and me? Living in a COVID-covered world, well, how do we navigate this? What don't we do? What if we could get a little bit of wisdom from God? Guess what? We can. All we have to do is ask for it. That's what King Solomon did. He asked for wisdom from God, and he got it. And that's what we can do today as we look at, at this whole account here and, and realize how important it is to pray for wisdom and, and to do so appealing to God's kindness and then asking for a discerning heart. Now, like I said, it is the, the beginning 
of a vicar year. We, we were used to the, the end of it, coming to the end, and, and then had the end last Sunday, but now we have the beginning of a, a vicar year. And what should a vicar do as his very first thing when he gets here? Well, I'm going to let Simeon tell you what he did af- after the service when he introduced himself. It's a pretty good story. But what about the second thing? Or maybe it was the first thing back in May when he got assigned here. And and it was a, a call from God, but I bet it didn't happen quite like this. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream. And God said, ask for whatever you want me to give you. What a dream. What an offer. God appearing to Solomon saying, hey, whatever you want, ask. Now, now before we go to bed tonight and say, hey, hey, Lord, as a part of our nighttime prayers, could you speak to me in a dream tonight? And, and during that dream, could you offer to give me whatever I asked of you? We, we better study the context here. Because it happened, all of this happened after King David had appointed his son Solomon to be the next king of Israel. And after God anointed Solomon and King David died and and, and Solomon now took the throne and was at Gibeon, just about six miles northwest of Jerusalem where the tabernacle was, the the temporary house of God, where God made presence known before Solomon then built a glorious temple to the Lord. It was there where God came to his people. God came to Solomon in a dream. Now, back then, they didn't have apps on their smartphones that had a Bible. They didn't even have big, thick NIV study Bibles. So God sometimes would speak to people in a dream. Because we do have big, thick, heavy Bibles, because we do have smartphones that have the Bible on them, we don't probably expect God to speak to us in a dream. Truthfully, he didn't do it that often in the Old Testament either, but he did do it on occasion when there was a big turning point in Israel's history, and the people of God and the plan of salvation was about to take a major turn, and so here he did it to Solomon. And, and as he did it, he said, Solomon, you're about to take over. This is going to be a ginormous task for you. What do you need to get the job done? You know, I, I should probably explain how it is that we get vicars here at Beautiful Savior. Every year, God willing, we'll get one. And every year, I fill out an application form for one and and hand it into the seminary and this year I I did so the due date was the end of February so at the end of February I wrote down everything that I thought we would have a vicar do here at beautiful savior remember February February right that was pre-covid so here's what I didn't put down on that application I didn't put down that you're going to have to know how to produce and and put together an online video worship service. I didn't put that down. I didn't put down, you're going to have to get to know uh, a third of the congregation without ever meeting them in person. I didn't put down, you're going to have to figure out how to do outreach and evangelism when there's stay-at-home orders and and social distancing. I, I didn't put down, you're going to have to learn 20 to 30 new families that are coming to our school. I didn't put any of that down. But that's what he's going to have to do, and that's what I'm going to have to help him do. And so I'm going to need a whole lot of wisdom this year, and Vicar Crass is going to need a whole lot of wisdom this year, and you are too. Because I bet sometimes it feels like the responsibilities that God has given you are just slightly less than what he would give the king of Israel. Because he's given you children. And they're a blessing, but they're also a challenge at any age. And he's given you a a house and a home, but it isn't always easy to pay for. 
And, and the, the 1200 bucks from the, the government, well, that, that, what, that's about a week. And, and, and he's, he's, given, he's given you the responsibility to deal with your family members, and sometimes that's not so easy. And either he's given you a relationship, but it's, it's a lot of work, or he hasn't given you a relationship and it's lonely, or, or, or there's all sorts of challenges, and it's, it's overwhelming at times. It's frustrating. We could really use some help. So I'm not saying he would, but what if God did appear to you in a dream tonight? And again, I'm not saying that he's going to, but if he would... What would you ask him for? Well, Solomon asked for wisdom. Even before that, though, he did something very important. He acknowledged and appealed to God's kindness. Solomon answered, you have shown great kindness to your servant, my father David, because he was faithful to you and righteous and upright in heart. You have continued this great kindness to him and have given him a son to sit on his throne this very day. I like that word, kindness. That's really what God's grace is. It's kindness to us. Kindness is how we're all supposed to treat one another, right? We're supposed to be thoughtful. We're supposed to be caring. We're supposed to think of other people's needs. We're supposed to say nice words to one another. But we don't always carry it out. But God is always kind to us. And the kindness that he shows to us is a whole lot more than just giving us some nice scenery to look at. The kindness that he has shown to us is a kindness when we have shown to him rudeness and abusiveness and even anger at times. We're rude to God when we use his name uselessly as a throwaway line, or we forget to use it for all its intended purposes. We are angry with God when we think we know better than him and how our life should be going and what his commands for us should be and and shouldn't be. We aren't kind to God consistently, but he's always kind to us. In fact, if God wasn't kind, he would only be holy. And if he was holy, which he is, and only holy, you know how God would treat us? Not very kind at all. He would have, according to his holiness, he would have to destroy us. But God is both holy and kind He destroyed his son and spared us. He sacrificed his son and raised him back to life so that we would be forgiven. Kindness is giving something to someone without expecting anything in return, even when they don't deserve us. Well, God gave us his son and his righteousness that we get to wear. God gave us his son and his sacrifice to pay for our sins. God gave us free forgiveness He gave us life with him now and life with him uninterrupted, even by death. That's kind. And and Solomon was smart enough to address God by appealing and acknowledging to his kindness. By the way, what's, what's more remarkable, that God came to Solomon in a dream and spoke to him, or that in that very same dream, Solomon spoke back. To God. Either way, after acknowledging kindness, he then asked for wisdom. Or more, more specifically, he asked for a discerning heart. Now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, but I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. Your servant is here among the people you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to count or number. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people and to distinguish between right and wrong. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? He 
asked for a discerning heart, a heart that listens and then is guided according to God's wisdom. It was a very unselfish thing to ask. We might ask for something a little bit more selfish. We're kind of like Jerry Seinfeld's friend, George Costanza, who in, in one episode said, you know what? I would love to be a philanthropist. And he started out pretty good. He goes, I would love to help people. But then he went on to say, I, I would love to have people line up and ask me for money. And then if I felt like it, I would give it to them. And then they would owe me big time. That, that's kind of how we act. We, we don't mind being kind to people as long as there's, you know, a little something in it for us. But Solomon's request was for the good of, of the people he was about to serve. And he asked for wisdom in carrying out his duties. Our responsibilities, our particular challenging circumstances, and every single one of us has got something or, or many somethings we're dealing with is something that we need to appeal to God's kindness and then ask for wisdom and carrying it out. We might think we know better on our own. We might be kind of a roll up our sleeves, not sit on our hands type of person. But we're always better off when we ask for wisdom from God and we use the collective wisdom of others. God gave Solomon an enormous responsibility. He's given us some big responsibilities too. He's, he's giving Vicar Crass a responsibility of, of coming here and serving among us for a year in unusual circumstances where he's going to learn ministry one way and, and, and maybe, God willing, this, this is all over and, and he'll do it a different way or maybe he'll learn some things from doing it this way that, that he'll take with him. We're going to need wisdom, too, as we, we figure out what to do as a church, what we can't do, but what we can do, what we can do as a school, what we can't do, how we can serve everyone. All of us need wisdom in, in what we're dealing with. And so we remember how Solomon appealed and, and then what he asked for. And, and you know the rest of the story, right? Not only did God give Solomon wisdom, he gave him power and wealth as well. That's how generous and powerful and wise and kind God is. So, Vicar Crass, when you say your prayers tonight, and on all of us, when we're praying for him and his ministry among us, and when all of us go to God with our requests, with our intercessions for others and for our own needs, appeal to God's kindness. Acknowledge just how merciful and loving and kind he's been to us, and then ask for a discerning heart. And then watch him answer your prayers, and then watch him give you even more than you asked for. Amen. And now the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, may it guard and keep our hearts and minds always in Christ Jesus. Amen. We again thank you for uh, your offerings in support of our ministry here. And as you know, you can give online. You can take your phone up to that little QR code. Soon you'll be able to text in your offering, and you can just drop it off the old-fashioned way in the uh, offering plates. We'll now ask... Vicar Crass to step forward to be installed into his duties. Well, I had it here. Got it. With guidance from the Holy Spirit, 
The Apostle Paul has instructed the church that those who are called and appointed to the public ministry of the gospel must possess certain qualifications. Our church body has established ministerial education schools so that men who desire to serve as pastors may gain and demonstrate that they possess these qualifications. Simeon Crass has completed a portion of the training our church body considers necessary for service in the pastoral ministry. He has been assigned to our congregation to become involved in the practical work of the ministry under my direction and guidance. He will gain experience among us in preaching and presiding at our worship, in teaching our children, teens, and adults, in reaching out to the lost in our community, in visiting those among us who are sick and dying, and in the day-to-day -day activities of our church. He will have opportunities for careful study of the scriptures that he may learn to faithfully proclaim the law and the gospel to the people the Savior loves. He will observe how Christians and their pastor work together in love for the benefit of Christ's kingdom. Dear brother in Christ, St. Paul states that if anyone desires to be a pastor, he desires a noble task. Now the overseer must be above reproach, temperate, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not given to drunkenness, not violent but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him with proper respect. He must also have a good reputation with outsiders so that he will not fall into disgrace and into the devil's trap. Since one who desires to be a pastor is entrusted with God's work, he must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick-tempered, not pursuing dishonest gain. Rather, he must love what is good, be upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold firmly to the trustworthy message as it has been taught so that he can encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose it. Simeon, you have been assigned to our congregation to serve with me as you prepare for the pastoral ministry. I now ask, are you willing to apply yourself faithfully to your work and to carry out the responsibilities given to you? I will and I ask God to help me. Simeon Crass, on the basis of your call, and in the name of this congregation, I now install you as vicar at Beautiful Savior Evangelical Lutheran Church in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. May the Lord lead you to grow in faithfulness, wisdom, and love. May he bless you, and may he bless us as you learn and labor among us. And now let us pray. Eternal God, when your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, ascended higher than all the heavens, he gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. Pour out your blessing on Simeon Crass, who desires to serve your people as a pastor. Deepen his love for you as he recalls your grace to him. Strengthen his confidence in your word and sacraments as he observes their power in hearts and lives. Instill in him a fervor to help souls who have been redeemed by your son and give him joy as he honors you in his service to your people. Keep in your care all those students who are preparing themselves for the holy ministry of the gospel. Protect them from Satan's alluring call to walk away from service in your kingdom. Raise up among us a new generation of workers who will go into your world, proclaiming the good news of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And go then and take up the work to which you have been called. The Lord bless you and make you a blessing to many that you may bear fruit and that fruit may remain to eternal life. We continue on page 8 with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll close by singing, Hark the Voice of Jesus Christ. its hands Good morning once again, and thank you all for joining us in worship today. Um, As you take a look at the background, you can, uh, we'll get to that in the, we'll get to that in a moment. We got some things coming up. Um, I want to thank everyone, first of all, for all the uh, generous outpouring of of gifts and love uh, for for Ben, for Vicar Balgi. Um, I want to thank you also for uh, the welcome and the support uh, for Samantha and uh, Vicar Crass that you've uh, given today. We don't have a big program or anything, but we are going to give you some time to be able to grab grab a snap, grab a water bottle, and introduce yourselves. Uh, I know a bunch of you have introduced yourself to Samantha, um, but if you haven't, uh, you can meet her and then also uh, to Vicar Crass as well. In a couple of weeks... Um, In one way, shape, or form, we're going to be starting a new school year, and we'll be installing uh, our two new teachers, Samantha and Zach Unke, and we'll also celebrate uh, Becky Dyerson's 25th uh, year. This is the start of her 26th, maybe 27th, but uh, we're going to we're going to call it uh, a 25th anniversary that we planned on last spring, but are able to do just now. So that's all coming up. Uh, You can read about Vicar Crass, but um, I I want him to come up here and and, uh, introduce himself, and uh, he can uh, tell us who he brought with him, 
and he can tell us uh, some of, of the activities uh, that took place uh, shortly after he got here. Good morning. I am Simeon Crass, Vicar Crass, as Pastor Ohorn said, um, and he touched on it in the sermon, but uh, I got to take advantage of, of lovely California a little earlier than I think I expected to originally. Um, with me today, I have my parents, Thad and Shelley Crass, um, and that lovely young lady sitting next to them uh, is my fiance now. Uh, I took her to Oceanside a couple hours after we got here and uh, proposed on the, the beach there. And shockingly enough, I know, and she even said yes. She even said yes, so it was awesome. It was awesome. Um, so yeah, it's, I've got my family here. Thank you for getting me out here, Dad. That was, that was very wonderful. Um, which kind of brings me to the second point. Uh, ten years ago, I was going into high school, uh, and I, I s envisioned this day. You envision becoming a vicar, getting installed, uh, getting assigned, coming to a lovely church. I did not envision being outside. I did not envision wearing a mask, but... I envisioned a fantastic pastor and a fantastic congregation. It seems as if, just preliminarily, uh, it seems as if I've gotten both of those things. I am incredibly humbled with the, uh, the amount of blessings that God has shown me in, in assigning me to, to a beautiful Savior here in Carlsbad. And, and really, the weather is probably one of, I mean, it's, it's important, but it's one of the, the least of them because uh, I'm very, very excited to, to serve uh, with you folks in the ministry, uh, but more so even to, to learn from you folks as well as from Pastor Olhorn. Um, I'm just very excited for the year. So thank you very much, and I think I will be over there afterwards greeting people on the way out. Sounds good. All right, awesome. Thank you very much.